Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Finland once again, and that of course means that we're going to have a look at yet another beer from Riku Box Number One. So a massive shout out to one of my subscribers, Riku Sinaxanaho. He is now officially my Finnish beer mule, and thanks to him, you will be seeing a steady flow of Finnish reviews over the coming months and years. We're going to make sure that we do at least um, two beer boxes a year, so you will see some interesting Finnish beers consistently on the channel actually. So for this review we're actually going to return to a brewery that I first introduced on the channel back in maybe 2017 or 2018, I can't quite remember, but this is only going to be my second review from them and this is a style that I've never had from Finland before and it's one that I really enjoy. So hopefully this will be an interesting review and uh, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. So for this review we are going to head to an estate brewery, we're going to go out to the east of Helsinki and we're having a look at another beer from Malmgård in Panimo. So this particular beer is called the Emmer Trippel and as the name suggests this one is a Belgian style Trippel brewed with Emmer malt which is one of the oldest varieties of wheat that you can get and uh, this beer comes in at 8.3% ABV. The main motive behind getting this one was one to reintroduce uh, Malmgård and Panimo because I hadn't had anything from them for a long time. Two, the fact that this would be my first Finnish Trippel and you know um, three it was just to get a few kind of Belgian style beers out of the Finnish box as well. So Riku and I actually discovered that we found a brewery that have a quad repel so hopefully we can get a hold of that one for a review in the second box. But yeah, if you've watched the channel before you will know that my favourite styles of Belgian beer are the Trippels, the Flanders Reds, the Quad Rappels and also the Belgian Blondes. So definitely cool to get uh, something uh, like one of those on the channel for you with, uh, with the first finished beer box but uh, yeah really cool to return to these guys after quite some time so let's see how we get on with this one then as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Malm Gordon Panimo before hopefully we can do some more beers from these guys at some point in the near future there's all the usual social media down there as well if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefect or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Finnish beers that I've reviewed for you. That is now being added to fairly regularly and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is huge. Hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Malmgordian Panimo then. So this brewery, as I kind of mentioned to you already, is part of a family estate owned by the Kreutz family. So the estate itself is 23 kilometres to the northwest of Lovisa town, which has a population of approximately 12,000 people, but apparently over 40% of them are Swedish speakers. And I thought the Swedish speakers were mainly in the kind of west of Finland, but, you know, apparently not, mainly around the coastal areas from what I gather. Um, but Lovisa is actually also a municipality, and it's about halfway between Helsinki and the Russian border. If you remember that region of South Eastern Finland, um, the, that, the part that is now in Russia is, is Karelia and that is quite a historic uh, quite a historic Finnish area, so it's not surprising that there's kind of uh, that there are Swedish speakers and things there, because I think there's quite a bit of history there with the Swedish Empire and uh, and stuff like that actually. But anyway, the Kreutz family have owned this estate since 1614, and the current owner is Johan Kreutz, who is the 12th generation of the family to run the company. So the brewery itself was established back in 2009, which I believe makes it one of the first kind of of the new wave of Finnish breweries, if you like. But it's located inside a converted farmhouse next to the estate. The brew kit is one that was originally used for brewing British ales and they've got a capacity of around 500,000 litres of beer per year which does make them one of the biggest independent breweries in Finland. Apparently though they like to brew with spelt and emmer wheat varieties and some of this they actually produce themselves and the rest is brought in from local suppliers in Finland from what I understand. Uh, but the current brewmaster at the brewery is uh, Tuomas Markula who also works as a brewing teacher as well from what I understand. Um, but in addition to beers and cider 
ciders, the estate produces flour, bread, jam, vinegars, honey, and uh, all of the products apparently are organic as well. But they've got a bar and shop on site where you can go and taste the beers and uh, you can buy all the other stuff that they sell on the estate as well. And um, yeah, I think that would be pretty cool to visit, I have to say. Maybe I can film a little out and about video there at the Malmgordian uh, estate sometime. It'd be cool to do a meet the brewery with these guys as well, if it is possible. Um, but yeah, as of August 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 160 different beers, which is a pretty impressive return. That works out at at least, you know, it's about 15 beers a year, something like that, that these guys have produced. So pretty damn impressive, actually. So yeah, one of the older craft breweries in Finland as well. And uh, I guess these guys probably remind me a little bit of the likes of one of my local breweries, Remaluv Gorge Brewery, Abeltoff Gorge Brewery over in Denmark. And then you've got uh, Opigords. Uh, in, uh, way up in Dalarna as well. They're probably a little bit more like Opigords in terms of the timeline and uh, and things like that. I think Opigords were like 2005 or something like that that they formed. It's about 15 years they've been on the go. But um, yeah, definitely cool to return to these guys, like I say, and cool to review my first Tripel as well. So I need to keep an eye on what these guys are releasing and just see if we can try a few different uh, different styles actually. So um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Malmgordian Panimo for the moment. Definitely cool to find another uh, brewery with uh, this very, very long history, actually. So, um, yeah, if you want to learn more about this brewery, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn about all the different beers that they've done. So, um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. Let's have a go at it. So, yeah, as you can see then, the there is the Malmgordian Panimo symbol there. I'm not sure if that's meant to represent one of the kind of wind dials that you would get on the top of a barn or something like that. That's what it really seems to kind of remind me of. But you can see the bottle is sweating once again because of the lovely um, Swedish or Scandinavian summer that we're having here. It's getting very, very hot here these days, with 30 odd degrees every day. But um, yeah, this one I think should be, should be quite interesting. But uh, yeah, there you can see uh, the bottle cap from this brewery, but um, yeah, 8.3% triple this one. It says on the side here, it does have Swedish on it, so I can read that, I can't read the Finnish. It says, um, the Egyptians knew that Ull brewed with um, Emmer malt, tasted um, very, very nice, um, or fairly, is that what it's saying? Um, tasted good, tasted fairylicious or something like that. I think they're doing a little play on words there that I can't literally translate. Um, but we, our brewmaster combined the Emmer wheat with our um, taken from our own fields with some new uh, Belgian malt base and uh, with this this gives a bit of a fresh spidiness, spiciness, a craftiness and also um, a nice warming beer. So um, yeah, 8.3% this one, the hops in this one are Pearl, which is a German variety, about 6% alpha acid, slightly stronger than the usual Haller Tower or Tenanger hops. But um, yeah, and they recommend that you pair this one with cheese, pork, and I don't know if that's meant to be like a casserole or a stew or something. But here it says on the side, it's I think this basically translates into highly recommended by the pharaohs. So vava suositus faraolita, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, probably not. But yeah, an 8.3% beer, this one, the Emmer Triple. Let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Very curious to see how this one turns out. But uh, yeah. Let's get this guy out and into the glass. Ooh, this one looks quite nice actually. I do remember beers that I've had like spout. I don't think I've had emmer before, but I'm sure I've had spout actually, which is another vari old variety of wheat. I think that's a German one if I remember rightly, spout. But um, yeah, this one, I do remember them being a little bit darker than other kinds of beer. But um, yeah, as you can see, this one's poured quite a kind of dirty blonde colour. If we hold the light up to this, it actually does get a little bit brighter. Um, so yeah, there was a small quarter finger of a frothy, I would say kind of fawn coloured head on this one. That's just faded away to be a very thin foamy layer. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there. But as you can see, the head has just faded away. To 
to be a very, very thin foamy layer. This beer does have a degree of haze to it, but it's, it's, it's certainly not the most hazy um, tripel that I've come across before, and it's not the clearest tripel that I've come across. Definitely somewhere in the middle, a little bit of a natural haze, but I think it's fair to describe this one as being a nice, dirty blonde colour, actually. So, um, yeah, this one looks as if it should be really quite nice. So um, yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we got. And I'm very curious to see how this Emmer malt um, turns out in terms of the uh, in terms of the aroma. So let's go for it. Ooh, it does actually smell very kind of um, it really smells very kind of yeasty and grainy almost. Yeah, it does smell like a bit of a darker, dustier wheat almost actually. But yeah, this one, this, this, I'll say straight away, in terms of a tripel, this beer strikes me as being really quite phenolic almost. And it's definitely one of the more kind of dried, sultana y type tripels that I've come across. Um, but yeah, this is interesting, this one. So, yeah, where to start with that actually? So straight away with this beer. You can smell that typical doughy, yeasty kind of note that you would expect of any um, Belgian-style tripel. At the same time, though, as you would kind of expect from any Nordic beer, it does have an element of kind of cleanliness to it, you know, the, the, the purity of the water almost in uh, the Nordic countries really just makes these Belgian style beers feel a little bit cleaner and not quite as thick as the ones that are actually brewed in Belgium. I've noticed that with ones I've had here, eh, notably from um, Eskils to Nahulkulter. They, they do some really nice Belgian beers but they always feel considerably cleaner than the ones you actually get from Belgium. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that of course, but um, yeah, the, the aroma but this one is pretty nice actually. It comes across, it's got a lovely kind of smooth bready base to it in my mind, but you can just smell that it's a little bit more kind of grainy. Um, it almost smells a little bit more kind of bread crusty, if that makes sense. It's, the smoothness is there, a bit more of a bread crusty quality to it. And then in the middle of the nose you've got a wee bit of a sweet kind of, um, you've got a wee bit of a kind of sweet caramelly kind of thing to it. You've also got a bit of a kind of biscuity note. The other thing that they always do with tripels is they add a little bit of brew sugar into it, like rock candy sugar. And th I think, I'm sure someone's told me it's rock candy sugar that they put in these beers. But yes, yeah, a, a type of, some kind of candy sugar that they'll always put in these. And that's how they manage to maintain a fairly light mouthfeel and not feel quite as thick and oily as you're going to get from some other higher alcohol styles. And they do the same with the quadrupels, of course, as well. Um, there's always a bit of brew sugar in the Belgian style beers from what I understand. But um, yeah, this one, the, the malty notes in this are pretty unique. And when it's called Emmer Tripel, you know, you would kind of expect that to be honest. So yeah, quite a grainy, wheaty quality there. White bready base, bit of bread crusty note to it, some sweet caramel, some biscuity notes in there. And you can smell like a sort of lighter, brown sugary quality um, quality to this beer. But you've got a good bit of a doughy, kind of bready, yeasty quality that comes out of this beer as well. So, um, yeah, this is, um, this one is pretty damn nice, I have to say. I really like how this, uh, how the aroma of this goes together. So, thumbs up to, um, thumbs up to, to, uh, Malmgord and Panimo for this. This is a, a quite an interesting beer. It's definitely one of the quirkier, um, trip else that I've come across. I think in terms of the, the malt base, there's not too much else to say about it, apart from maybe one or two kind of woody and slightly leafy elements to it, if that makes sense. But the leafiness probably goes more in line with the hops. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things, there is a wee bit of that kind of smooth, kind of German earthiness to it, if you like. Um, you get a little bit of floral aromaticity to it as well. Some lighter kind of grassy notes. I think the grassy notes on this are a bit, um, are quite nice and smooth. As I say, the German hops, I've always found them to be a bit smoother, whereas the um, the Czech ones, that the Sats, for example, which are the Jatits as they call it, um, has a little bit of a kind of more brighter, slightly spicier profile. The Pearl, of course, is slightly higher in alpha acid, usually about six, six and a half percent compared to the usual five of um, the Hallertaus and the Tintnangers. But um, yeah, it does have a nice little bit of grassiness to it, this beer. On the fruity side of things, this again is somewhere where this beer is quite interesting. It's got quite a bit of a kind of dried sultana type quality to it. There's a few apple and pear esters in there, maybe a wee bit of apricot. But yeah, it's really like a dried sultana note and quite appley and pear-y that you get out of this one. There's a wee bit of a grassy zestiness to it as well. But um, yeah, the aroma that comes out of this, I think, is um is very very nice. It's quite an interesting one for sure. 
So, um, yeah, the aroma that comes out of this beer, I think, is um, is pretty interesting. It's quite a quirky smell in Tripel, this one. It smells very, very clean, but at the same time, it comes across as very smooth and quite unique on the uh, on the grainy side of things. So take a little bit of time to, uh, to enjoy that one. But uh, let's get stuck into this now and see how we get on. So this one is the Emma Tripel coming in at 8.3% EBV, a bit lower than some other Tripels that I've had before. Right enough, most of them I think usually tend to be about 9%, although 8.5 I guess, I've had a few around that mark. But yeah, 8.3% Tripel this one with Emmer wheat, one of the oldest varieties of wheat you can find from Malmgord and Panimo in Lovisa in the southeast of Finland. Let's get stuck into this one. Thank you again to Riku for supplying me with this beer and let's have a taste of it. Slanja, Skull, Kipis. Oh yeah, that is pretty nice actually, I have to say that. Yeah, I like, I do like how this, um, how this one goes together. I said that in about the aroma, but the way it goes together with that kind of more grainy, bready approach is quite nice as well. I would say this is quite different to, you know, a lot of the other triples you're going to come across, the La Traps, the the Best Malas, the, um, you know, the things like that. It is very, very different to those, um, to those beers, but it's, it's pretty interesting actually. It comes, this is one of these ones that's definitely a bit more grainy in the aftertaste compared to other things. Yeah, I like how this goes together, 100%. So yeah, where to start with this one then? So straight away with this beer, you get a nice kind of, um, you do get a nice kind of white bready base to this one, but the further you go into the aftertaste, you'll start to get a few more kind of woody notes to it. If you go to the front corners of your palate, then just go diagonally back, you'll get a f you will notice the kind of smooth woodiness that this beer has. You've got a nice kind of grainy element to it as well, like I said. And uh, yeah, it's really, um, it's really, it's it's really nice how that that kind of pieces together. Yeah, that's uh, it's one. This really grows on me. The more and more I drink in this, the more I like it. And and it's I would say that overall, yeah, it's really one of the more grainy um, trip hills that I've had. If you go towards the back third of your tongue there, it's got a very nice, um, it's got a very nice um, kind of, how do you say, um, it should have just got more of a kind of graininess to it on the back third of the tongue, you can feel that it gets a little bit thicker and a bit more kind of bread crust if that makes sense, and it's definitely got a bit of that, um, just kind of more graininess to it, a bit of a spicy kind of wheaty quality as well, but I think the wheat comes out a little bit more in the middle of the palate, you really get that nice kind of smoothness, but also graininess out of the wheat, and then towards the, the, the front of that middle third of your palate, it's distinctively more kind of woody and smooth. In the very centre of your palate, it's almost like you've got a kind of, it's almost like a big circle, like a sort of island, and it's like a Werther's Original type, um, type oily character. That, um, that comes out with this one. In the very centre of it, it's very sweet and caramelly, but then as you gradually move out from that, it gets a little bit more kind of biscuity and grainy, and underneath, you've got that sort of Werther's Originally um, type flavour, but it does have a little bit of a darker kind of boozy brown sugar to it as well, and that, of course, is all sitting on top of that kind of slightly grainier, but very smooth, um, wheaty base from the Emmer malt, actually. Um, I'm just want, I'm trying to remember if this is the first time I've had an Emmer based beer. I've definitely had Spout, I've definitely had Spout, but I've never had, um, I, I really don't think I've had Emmer before. So this is an interesting experience on that level as well. So yeah. This one's definitely got one of the quirkier malty bases that you're going to come across in a trip hill, I think. So, you know, kudos to um, Malmgordin for um, for having a go at something a bit different, actually. That's always uh, pretty damn cool. But, um, yeah, it does, the further you go into the aftertaste, the woodiness comes out a little bit more. It gets a bit more grainy, a little touch more boozy as well, which is is, uh, is quite interesting. So, yeah, interesting 
Um, interesting beer, this one, from the malt base is really where it's all at. The thing that I get about this one as well is you don't notice, usually in quite a few tripels, you notice the sweetness is, it almost feels like quite separated from the uh, the rest of the beer because of the brew sugar, but it actually integrates, I find the sweetness actually integrates quite um, quite well with this one, so that's a really interesting point to make about this beer for sure. Uh, on the hoppy side of things then, in the back corners of the palate you've got a nice little bit of, uh, of earthiness there. The earthiness I think is a little touch stronger than it is in the uh, from the aroma, but as you move further forward along the sides of the palate, it's definitely a little bit smoother. You've got some nice kind of floral aromaticity as you go towards the front of the um, the front corners of the palate. Then, as you go round the very front curve of the tongue, it's a little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy. But I'd say that the the hoppy side of the beer it really leans a little bit more towards that grassy side of things. The grassiness just sort of aids the slight spiciness that this beer has from the from the the emmer uh, the emmer wheat grains. So um, yeah. Definitely, you can feel the slight spiciness of this beer building the further you go into the aftertaste. But yeah, let's look at the fruity side of this one then and see how we get on with that. But yeah, it's quite similar to what you would expect from the, uh, from the aroma. So yeah, that front third of your palate, as I always say, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer from the hops mainly, but you also get the yeast contributing to that in a lot of cases. But yeah, if you go towards the back of the um, that front third of your palate, you get more of the kind of sultana notes in there. Um, so yeah, it's quite sort of sultana-like, but then as you move further forward, you can feel the, the flavour just progressing a little bit more. Progressively becoming a bit more peary and slightly juicy and apple-y. Um, there's maybe one or two little apricot-y touches in there um, as well. Like It's got a little bit of that, that kind of dried sultana jammy type quality to it as well, which is quite interesting. There's a few, the, the fruitiness in this beer is really quite nice actually. I like how it goes together. But then as you reach the very kind of front edge of the tongue, the beer has a little gooseberry edge to it. And then the grassy notes on the very, very tip of the tongue, they've got a little bit of a kind of citrusy zest to them as well. So it's a really interesting uh, beer on a lot of levels, this one. I like the fruitiness that it has, that sort of light kind of um, the kind of light esters that are in there, it's really interesting from that uh, from that perspective. So uh, yeah, it gets a big thumbs up. Um, gets a big thumbs up from me in uh, in that regard. I, I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this one again. That's for sure. I need to have a look and see what else these guys of these guys actually have because both of the beers that I've had, the Winter Warmer, which was the other one, that was a really interesting and quite complex beer, and this one strikes me. Um, it's being quite similar, so I need to have a look and see what else these guys have, and maybe get Riku to uh, to order one of those for the next day uh, for the next box. Actually, so yeah, hopefully you can see a few more Malm Gordon beers at some point soon. But uh, yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel, then um, so yeah, it's quite um, it's definitely not the thickest of tripels that you're going to come across. I think this is just again down to the Nordic water being as pure as it is this beer um, it's got a lovely flavour to it and you always get this with Belgian and German style beers brewed in the Nordics so they feel very clean and they just feel that little bit lighter as a result of that because of the very pure water but yeah I would describe this beer as being fairly kind of mid-bodied the carbonation is very smooth it's got a lovely kind of clean mouthfeel to it there is a degree of oiliness to it but as I say not as um, it's got the same the smoothness that you'd expect of the Belgian beers, but it just feels that little bit cleaner and lighter because of the water. Um, in terms of the um, yeah, in ter as I would say, in terms of the um, the hoppiness of this beer, where do we think with that? Um, this one I think is very low. I think it's maybe about twenty-ish IBUs, twenty-five at most. But the spiciness that the beer has gives you the impression of a little bit more. Um, so you might think that this beer is maybe about 35 or 40 IBU, something like that, just because of the spiciness of the greens, but I think this one is only about 20 IBUs if you're lucky, which is about right for a trip L. Malt base, like I said, very, very smooth, a few kind of, um, a few little sweet elements to it as well, and you've got some nice kind of juicy, fruity qualities coming out of it also. So um, yeah, it's a really, um, it's a really quite nice beer in that sense. Um, and everything, it's one of these ones where everything just fits together well, but if we compare it to other triples, definitely a bit more grainy, some really interesting fruity qualities, and um, it's a really nice kind of drinkable one, I have to say. It's, it's one of the more drinkable triples that I've had. To me, the triple is always a treat beer. You have one of these, 
um, just as if you you know a treat to to have before you move on to something a little bit kind of stronger. It's maybe you have maybe a few IPAs or something like that. Um, a, a lager, you know, you maybe have a lager or two, then you'll have an IPA, then you'll go on to a triple, and then you start moving on to the more kind of uh, bigger and malty stuff. I've always, if you do session beer, I don't anymore, but uh, that for me is where the triple always kind of uh, fits in actually. It's a good kind of um, main meal pairing beer, whereas for the dessert you might want a quadruple or something like that, something a bit more malty. But uh, yeah, big thumbs up to Mam Gordon Panimo for this one. Really impressed with this. Quite a quirky triple in my mind, and I would recommend that you try this if you get the chance. So uh, yeah, let's leave it at that. Definitely cool to film another finish review for you. Nice to return to this brewery. I do need to look and see what other beers they have and see what. Um, what I can get Riku to get for me, but uh, yeah, this one, as I say, highly recommended by the Pharaohs. I would highly recommend it because it is pretty nice, but I'm not quite old enough to be a Pharaoh yet, I don't think. So, yeah, there we go. But yeah, guys, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Malm Gordon Panimo. If you are watching from Finland, do let me know what other breweries there have tripels and quadrupels and Belgian style beers. Uh, thin, uh, you know, Flanders Reds, sorry not Finnish Reds, Flanders Reds is another style that I really enjoy, it'd be cool to um, to see what other ones I can get a hold of, but yeah that would be awesome, let me know your Finnish beer knowledge in the comment section below, thank you again for watching, check out the, the playlist of the other Finnish beers there as well, and you will see more coming up over the next little while, thank you again for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon, and this one was the Emmer Triple 8.3% ABV from Malmgård and Panimo, just outside of Lovisa in uh, southeastern Finland. Thank you again to Riku for making this review possible and I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, school, keep peace. Make sure you check out this beer.